Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope you have had a wonderful week. I'm Alison. And I'm Dara. We're part of the Messy Church team at Bridlington Priory. This week's a little bit different. Um, Sunday is Bible Sunday, organised by the Bible Society, an organisation who work tirelessly so people can have access to the Bible and to help them engage with it as well. The story and the craft activity are part of the resources they've shared for people um, as well uh, as the links to the templates etc I'll also share uh, a link to their website which has the resources that we're using which are theirs on there as well okay uh, so you can read about their work <laughs> we've just realized the dog's still in here as well so if the camera falls over at any second we will rectify it, it has a tendency to run round by the uh, tripod so bear with us <laughs> uh, but yeah you can you can see the um all this info about the bible society's work on that link but let's start off with a prayer dear lord we thank you for our family and friends we thank you that we can always talk to you all we have to do is pray we thank you for our family and friends um we thank you for our time at Messy Church and that, and that we learn more about you through our story. Help us to always listen to you and try to do the things that you would want us to do. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so, um, the COVID-19 pandemic has stopped us from being able to come together as a church community to worship and not being able to meet up with everybody from Messy Church has been, well, it's been really sad, hasn't it? Um, we've missed that fellowship of sharing a meal and playing together and singing and all of those things. Lots of things are happening online like this and uh, we have the a sunday service every every sunday morning and then there's usually either um either a songs of praise or uh, a reflection from reverend christine on a sunday evening so there's lots going on but you know we still miss that and and of course we are in church on a sunday morning as well but we still miss being able to meet as messy church but the good news is that we always knew eventually that not too far in the future we'd be together again it may be some time but we will still we will be together but imagine that you weren't going to meet up with your church family and worship god with them for year upon year more than 10 years more than 25 years more than 40 years in fact in fact about 50 years and imagine if you didn't have any way to stay in touch because everyone had moved away and you didn't know where they were. Worse still, imagine that you weren't able to hear or read the Bible all that time except the bits that you had memorised. Well, this really happened to God's people many years ago, long before Jesus was born. There was a war in their country, their main city, Jerusalem, was destroyed and most of the people had to leave to live somewhere else. But after about 50 years, they were allowed to return home. This is the story of the first time they came together after their reunion to hear God's words spoken to them, uh, read to them as a community. I am Simeon. I am 10 years old and my family has just moved to a very old city called Jerusalem. It is the hometown of my granddad Ezra, but granddad hasn't lived in Jerusalem for over 50 years and I've never lived here before. Before we, we moved back, granddad Ezra used to tell me about this beautiful place in the city called the temple. The temple had all of the writings of God to his people. Grandad used to go to this temple place to meet his friends and family and learn about God. 
But the longer Grandad was away from Jerusalem, the older he got, and he began to, to forget. His beard grew very long, his hair became very white, and his back became a little stoop. When I asked him questions about God, sometimes he had the answers, but, some, but other times he was tired and weak and sad. And he would say, I'm sorry, Simeon, I don't remember, I have forgotten. But now our whole family and many others, many other families, have moved back to Jerusalem. And today is very exciting indeed. We are thrilled to be all gathering at the temple together. All the men, all the women and all the children. We left our house early in the morning before even the sun was properly, properly in the sky. And we walked down the stone road toward the centre of the city. Mum was carrying a brightly coloured rug and Dad carried a basket full of delicious things to eat for our lunch. Shortly, we arrived at the large wooden gates of the newly completed walls. Around the, si around the city that Dad's friend Nehemia had built, Mum and Dad each took one of my hands and, and gave a little squeeze of excitement and together we stepped through the giant gates and made our way into the crowd. There are so many people, we could barely move. All of Grandad Ezra's friends were there and their children and their children's children and their children's children's <laughs> children. There was waving, there was hugging and the noise. It was so loud with chatter and laughter and waving and hugging. I could barely hear dad calling me over to where people were spreading their rugs to sit, sit down. I squeezed past the press of bodies around me and sat next to mum and dad. To mum. Sat next to mum. Dad pointed to a tall wooden platform that had been built high above where we were sitting so that everybody could see. I noticed there was a man climbing up the stairs to get onto the platform. He looked familiar. He had a very long beard and he had very white hair and his back was a little stooped. It was my granddad Ezra climbing up onto the platform. As granddad Ezra picked up one of the scrolls, all the chatter, all the laughter, all the waving and all the hugging stopped. Qu quite suddenly, every person stood up and turned toward the high wooden platform. And we held our breath together, waiting for something to happen. Grandad Ezra stretched open the scroll and began to read God's word in a clear, strong voice. He read and he read and he continued reading. In fact, he read until, until the sun was high in the sky and it was time for lunch. But we didn't eat lunch because we were already full, full of thank, thankfulness. We had heard God's word, words and we knew how he wanted us to live our lives. Praise the Lord, the great God, shouted Grandad in a loud voice. Amen, amen, all of the people called out together. And then the young and old, and then young and old, we all bowed down onto the ground and we worshiped God. As we began to discuss and understand the words we had heard, some of the people began, began to feel sad because they realized they had not, they had not been living the way God wanted them to. But Grandad Ezra's friend, Nehemiah, 
Um, you know the one who built the new wall around the city, stepped up beside Grandad and began to speak. Don't be sad, this is a day to celebrate, for now you understand for words. Enjoy your picnics and share the food and drink with one another. <coughs> this is a very special day. Don't be sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then Grandad Ezra went to the stairs at the edge of the hill high platform. He, he still had a long beard. He still had white hair, but his back was straight and strong. And he went down the stairs with a hop, a skip and a jump for joy. Wow. Thank you, Dara. That was fantastic. Well done. That was a big story to read. Amazing. And I have a few things that we might want to think about about that. So, what do you do with it? Do you think you might just move Jack? Because I wonder if, if the noise of his bone is going to be... I apologise if you can hear a strange sound. Jack has decided to position himself just at the bottom here of the camera and he's chewing on a chew. And it's rather noisy. So I'm sorry if you can hear a strange sound. <laughs> I think if we move him, they might not have a thing either. Um, have a think about these things though. Have you ever been in a large crowd like the one in this story? I'll just put his bone. It's alright, don't worry. Hey, don't worry. Have you ever been in a large crowd like the one in this story? Can you think of a time when you've been in a large Ooh, crowd? Oh yes, yes. At school when it was cupcake day, there was like a mass <laughs> whole school. 249 people were crowded there. Me. Over at the other side <laughs> of the playground. Oh wow. And they were all trying to get cupcakes at once, were they? Is that yeah. what it was? Oh, I see. And I remember when you were very little, we went to a very big fairground and there were so many people there. It was really, really difficult to make your way through the crowds. Who do you know who is 50 years old or older? Do you know anyone? Um, how about one year younger? One year younger? No, <laughs> that doesn't count. Anthony. Yes. Yes, Uncle Anthony's older. Your dad. Yes, your dad is older. Yeah, we know quite a lot of people who are older than 50 years old, don't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. And how old will you be 50 years from now? 59. 59, yes. <laughs> I don't think I will be here then. <laughs> no. That would make me... 118. Nope. Yeah. 50 years from now. I like... It would make me... 117. No, younger than that, thank you. 116. 99. What? Yeah. <laughs> 49. Yeah. Add 50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I'll just... Leave. It says in the story that the people bowed down on the ground and worshipped God. Why do you think they did that? And do we do anything like that at church? Well, we don't bow down literally. No. But we did before COVID in a way, didn't we? What did we do? We knelt down and prayed. And we also knelt down at another point as well. And we were taking communion. Yes, exactly. So we don't bow down in quite the same way anymore, but we do when we when we can because of, well, obviously at the moment we can't because of COVID restrictions, but when we can, yes, we kneel as we're going to receive communion and we kneel when we're praying sometimes. Uh, not everybody kneels when they pray, but... Um, but we tend to sit forward if we're not kneeling. Um, but why do you think they do that? What, what do you think it is that they're wanting to say from that? Um, that they respect him. Yeah, that's really good. Well done. And they want to follow Fantastic. in his footsteps. Fantastic. And there was something as well that you, you mentioned in the story that was different at the end. Do you remember about Ezra? What was different about Ezra at the end? He still had a white beard and he still had white hair, but he but his back was yeah, strong. He was standing upright because he felt the strength and the power of what was in the words. Fantastic! I really like that story. Um, it's a really good one. It is. It's great. It's got really good moral to it. We are now going to do our craft for today, and our craft for today. I can't speak blue. Our craft for today is um, well, we're going to make a little scroll of our own. And the first thing we need is a piece of paper. A piece of paper, exactly. And then the second thing we need cup of tea. is a cup of tea. Yes, a cup of tea, but no milk. And <laughs> um, what you need to do is you need to take a tea bag, get a grown up to do this, obviously. 
you need to take a tea bag and you need to uh, put some boiling water in it first of all but then you can cool it down because what you need is a cool tea bag like this one yes you can see the little drips of water there uh, and then all we're going to do is we're going to take the tea bag and obviously do this on a table with some newspaper out or whatever or something that's going to make it easy and we're simply going to rub the sheet of paper with the tea bag and you have to cover it so that every bit is covered i can't if i do this here i'm just going to end up covered in tea but um you get the idea anyway you basically all i'm doing is i'm rubbing the tea bag on the piece of paper and i did it when i did the ones that we've done i did it on both sides as well and you end up with dara something like this yes oh i think jack wants to go out in the hallway do you want to just let him out and then you don't have to worry about him knocking the thing over there we go just shut that door that's it no shut it properly and then he won't come back in here is our finished piece of paper and hopefully you can see the color on there it's not actually it doesn't look quite as dark on the screen but there you go and you'll see it sort of looks a bit like old paper a bit like parchment type paper doesn't yeah, it yeah if you if you left a piece of paper buried underground mm. um give it 10 years yeah 50 years 100 years mm -hmm. uh, not 100 <laughs> you'd be dead by then anyway <laughs> what you do then is we're going to cut the piece of paper now the other thing that we need for our, our craft activity um is we need some lolly sticks or if you happen to have a straw one of those long longer straws you could cut that in half and use a straw instead but these lolly sticks that we've got work just as well because it looks more realistic yes. and what you want to do is you want to cut the paper so that it's just a bit smaller than your lolly sticks like here so you end up cutting it along like this so that it is smaller than your lolly sticks and, and then I what, think you know what we might be doing what we're gonna do we're making a scroll yeah I already said that <laughs> I said that while you were dealing with the dog <laughs> yes yeah. and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our stick and we're going to just glue down there now you could use if you wanted to you could use the double-sided tape it doesn't matter it's entirely up to you okay but either way we then glue the stick to the very end of our parchment like this so that the stick is glued onto the parchment and do this first because i made the mistake of not doing this first this morning and then when i did the next step um it kind of got in the way so make sure you glue the sticks on first da, da, da. and then mm. obviously mine's a bit uneven but you can make yours a bit more even when the sticks are stuck on you can then write a verse on this scroll and they end up like that yes da, da, da. brilliant and then you take a pen where is the black pen <laughs> it's vanished um but you can take any pen has it fallen off oh, strange okay um and you, you're going to write the verse on there and then what you'll end up with is a scroll and what you're going to do then once you've written the uh, verse on you're then going to roll the scroll in on itself like this and you end up then with a little scroll like this da, da, da. mine looks a bit rough because I that's all right i just did mine quickly as well but here's one that we did earlier and i even took some of the um the string that we had in the messy church bag and i happened to just tie it around it do you want to unravel the scroll do you want to take this end and i'll take the other um, one second. Oh, are you busy rolling? Yeah, I like rolling. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll unroll it now. So if I take one end and you take the other. Now, of course, because of the way that Facebook flips this, you won't be able to read it. It's upside but there down. is. Oh, it's upside down as well. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter because it's still the wrong way around. But there is a verse on there. And in the, um, the Bible Sunday resources, there is some suggested verses that you might um, think. Can you read that? Do you want to read what that says? Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes, exactly. Brilliant. But you could put any Bible, whoops, any Bible verse on there that you happen to like. Whatever, whatever you fancy, basically, you could put in there. Um, there we go. Because they're a good way as well of learning a verse. 
because can you imagine what would have happened if they hadn't have memorized some of the verses that means that they wouldn't have had access to any of god's word while they had been away fantastic well done okay so today we are going to pray as we usually do but as well as the people oh i'm sorry i am jumping the gun because i forgot to do this bit first <laughs> we've got our bah, 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 our calendar out again um and this are you tired dear you've only had a day off school today as well because it's teacher training um we've got our calendar that most of you would have got especially if you get a messy church bag you should have got one of these um this week it's creation and Coven covenant joseph slavery dreams and freedom now we did the story of joseph a while back didn't we so you all know that one anyway but um i have put the link to the bible reading for this on the facebook page which will be there now actually um so you can have a read of that if you want to but here's what it says it says worthy of a soap opera joseph's story sees him sold as a slave in egypt because of sibling rivalry honest labor and integrity led him to becoming the top man in the household but false accusation caused his fall from grace and prison it was all about dreams his brothers hated him because of his dreams and in prison, he accurately explained dreams of fellow prisoners from Pharaoh's court. So when Pharaoh had some nasty dreams, Joseph was called upon to explain them. The dream warned of years of famine, but with God's help, Joseph was able to offer a solution. Store any excess food for seven years a plenty, then share it out in the seven years when the harvest would fail. He was put in charge of the whole country. Joseph's brothers eventually came seeking food. And after a touching reunion, the entire family moved to Egypt. And it says, wonder together about how it might have been for Joseph to carry on trusting God. Just when things seemed to be going well, something bad happened again. And I think that happens to us sometimes, doesn't it? When we think that everything is going wonderfully, um, something comes along and makes us wonder, well, you know, is God there? But of course he is and he's always listening. And if they, when things do go wrong, he's there to help us and support us as well. And it says here, do, whoops, think, uh, draw seven fat cows and seven thin cows. <laughs> List seven things that you are thankful for and write them on the big cows. Thank God for them. List seven things that you are concerned about and write them on the thin cows. Ask God to help. So that might be something that you want to have a go at this week. Get out your calendar and have a look. And there's some really good activities on the weeks if you haven't been doing them. There's some really good activities on the weeks that you might have missed as well. So it's worth going back and having a look. Right, go on. And by the way, don't stress if the cows are horrible because my cows would be horrible. I, I, I deliberately didn't draw cows. I was going to draw a cow, but then when I realised how badly I draw cows, I didn't. Wait, so <laughs> <laughs> we should maybe have a worst drawn cow competition. <laughs> so you, I would, yeah, I would be pretty close, I think. All right, I think so I, do. <laughs> I think we now go, we are now going to have our lighthouse prayer. Yeah. We're going to pray as we normally do, as I said, but we're also going to think about a few other things. Imagine what it must be like to want to know more about God um, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but to not have a Bible it's, or even have access to it. Because, you know, even if you don't have a Bible, but you've got access to a smartphone or you've got access to a computer, you can get every bit of the Bible online. It's all there. Um. It's no wonder the people who were listening who li were listening to Ezra were crying when they realised how far away they had come from living the way God wanted them to. So light your lighthouse as Dara is doing if you've got one, or your tea light if you don't, or blow a bubble, or just sit quietly and get ready to talk to God. Dear Lord, Today we thank you so much that we have the Bible to help us learn more about you. As we read and listen to stories from the Bible, we ask you to help us to understand them clearly 
so that we can be closer to you. We pray for all the people in the world who aren't allowed to have Bibles. May they still know your love and the joy of your presence. We also pray for those who cannot afford a Bible and we pray for the work of those who distribute them, who distribute Bibles, often putting themselves in danger. Be with them and keep them safe as they do your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who do not yet know about you and your son. And we also pray for those who want to know more about you, but do not know where to begin. Lord, we ask you to bring people into their lives who can help them know where to find what they seek. Help us to recognise people around us who may be seeking you out. Give us the strength to say the right things to encourage them as they get to know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Wondrous God, we bring before you all the people and things that are on our minds this week. Thank you for all the wonderful things you are doing in our lives. Help us to understand that although it may not seem like it, you have a plan for us. Guide us as we try to live our lives with your plan in mind. We are sorry that we don't always do what you would want us to do. Help us to learn from our mistakes and try to live closer to you always. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. The uh, templates, the links and everything will be on the Facebook page now as we speak. Have a fantastic week and we will see you all next time. God bless.